raising the IQ and bankrolls of sports bettors everywhere. The Better IQ Podcast is your source for sports betting information, analysis, and opinions. Learn. Bet. Win. Better IQ. Good afternoon and welcome to the Better IQ Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Lang. We're going to kick off the uh, the week and actually close something out, close out our NFL division-by-division division, uh, previews. Uh, we have the AFC West here uh, to tackle. If you missed any of our uh, segments, we broke down every division uh, with Aaron Renning and our guest for today, Eric Waz. We encourage you to go back. The information, absolutely uh, tremendous, and it'll help you, of course, prepare here for the upcoming uh, football season. Speaking of football uh, season, it was a great one last year for the uh, Better IQ team. Combined college and pro, 61%. 61%, absolutely unbelievable. We're hoping that we can come close to duplicating that this year. We want you to be a part of that. Uh, We have uh, subscriptions up, full season of subscriptions. Of course, they include every single play at a prescribed time to ensure uh, that you get the uh, the best of the number. Those are available uh, on the uh, Buy Picks page or uh, select Handicapper uh, pages as well. And our guest here, he contributed to that. Uh, He had 15 units of profit, just over 15 units of profit in the uh, NFL, and he's here to break down uh, this AFC West division. Let's welcome in our guest, Eric Waz. Waz, how are you this afternoon? Doing good, Andrew. Happy to uh, talk to the the last of the divisions here, the AFC West, which is kind of an interesting uh, division here. It's kind of, sort of a dichotomy between the uh, the two powerhouse teams and two kind of bottom feeders uh, at the bottom there with Denver and Oakland. So uh, I expect more of the same this year. But these teams are definitely a little bit different than the last season. Some teams are, uh, you know, some, made some big changes here to try to overhaul their rosters and shake things up a little bit. So uh, yeah, excited to jump in. Let's start. We'll go in alphabetic order with the uh, Denver Broncos. Six and ten last year was six nine and one against the uh, spread. They're thirteen to one uh, to win this division. Uh, they're the third uh, choice, obviously behind Kansas City and the uh, Chargers. Season over under win total seven. Now, from a DVOA perspective, not that bad last season. A, a semi respectable fourteenth offensively, fifth defensively. You combo those two up. Uh, was and there are a lot of teams that had better records than six and ten with worse uh, DVO uh, ratings. Other factors, obviously included, but I know you'll uh, touch on the coaching. wasn't exactly a strength there of that Denver team uh, last season. What's in store here for uh, 2019? Yeah, well, that's just it. I mean, the coaching really cost them a couple of wins. I mean, you're right. The numbers overall, if you look at the the black and white numbers, the stats, um, they're not terrible. Um, and this was a terrible football team overall. So. A lot of that falls on Vance Joseph uh, and his staff, and as we know, he's gone. He's moved on, so um, now now they bring in Vic Fangio, who was the Bears' defensive coordinator last year, and he did some great things uh, with the Bears, especially last season. Finally broke through with a, uh, a number one defense, and um, it's still questionable if he's a leader and if he can you know, be a head coach. Uh, there was definitely some... Uh, some skeptics out there in the media that, that he could run a team, uh, but I think he's going to you know focus his efforts mostly on the defense and then uh, leave the offense to Rick Scandrello, who they brought him from the 49ers, and he's he's a quarterback guy. Um, he's the guy that coached the quarterbacks the last couple of years there. Uh, Garoppolo, Nick Mullins, who had a really good uh, season uh, when when Garoppolo was out last year, so he's kind of a QB guru. Um, you know, we'll, so we'll see if that's you know if that translates over to to Denver because they bring in Joe Flacco, uh, who as we know has been kind of on the slide here the last few years uh, with Baltimore. Uh, his best years definitely behind him. Um, he's got the arm strength. That's why LA brought him in. He loves guys who can throw the ball hard, and you know that doesn't always translate to, to success in the NFL. Uh, but you know, looking at it compared to what they had last year, Case Keenum, um, I'd probably if I had to stack him up, put Flacco a little bit ahead of Keenum, not by a lot, but I think change of scenery may do a little bit of good for him here in Denver. Um, they also got Drew Locke in the second round, who is definitely the, the franchise quarterback of the future, and yeah, there's a chance we could see him at some point this season if Flacco keeps struggling like he has the last couple of years. Um, but they got 
Uh, they got a nice backfield running behind them with Philip Lindsay, the the Pro Bowl uh, Pro Bowler in his rookie season last year. He was great, kind of came out of nowhere. Um, Royce Freeman uh, last year, also a rookie. Um, he was hurt a good part of last season. When he was in there, he looked really good. Um, you got a clear-cut number one receiver in Emmanuel Sanders. Um, they drafted a tight end in the first round, Noah Fant. Uh, with, he's a blazing fast guy for a tight end. I think he ran a 4-5, which for a tight end is, is really good. Uh, but the biggest move I think they made in the offseason was bringing in Mike Munchak to coach the offensive line. He's fantastic. He's definitely one of the top – three maybe the maybe the number one guy as far as offensive lines he's definitely a top three um he can transform the offensive line in a hurry which they had a lot of problems with last year um so i think you know with that bring in a new quarterback new offensive coordinator a lot of change here in denver for sure but i think it'll pay off long term i think we'll see some struggles with the offense probably the first three or four weeks of the season but i like what they did overall i think the offense is definitely better um than it was last year and like i said the numbers last year weren't terrible on paper. A lot of it was just poor head coaching, uh, you know, bringing them down. So I think this Denver team um, overall is probably a, a potential team that could surprise some people this year. Yeah, both Denver and Oakland uh, was, in terms of strength of a schedule, pretty tough. Um, you know, Just based on opponent yep. season over under wins. In fact, you kind of add all those up. I did that back in, uh, I don't know, it was like May or June. And it's just one, you know, one method, but a pretty basic one and a, and a good overview uh, but in looking at uh, you know both Oakland and Denver, uh, they have identical schedules in terms of their opponents' average season under win eight point five six. That's second most difficult in the NFL uh, uh, behind the uh, Houston Texans at eight point six two. So both teams, and, I, and this is kind of obvious because you're playing the Chiefs, you're playing the Chargers twice, and both teams lined at double digit wins. You just don't see that all that often uh, in the NFL. But something to uh, be aware of. Uh, let's move down to uh, last year's winner and speaking of that strength of schedule you know I'm looking at the chart right now was and the Kansas City Chiefs in terms of teams you know the finish first last year they're right there with the Bears not as difficult as Denver and Oakland but again uh, they're not playing themselves but schedule wise a little bit of a step up in class uh, compared to last year 12 and 4 uh, last year 9 6 and 1 against the uh, spread division odds they're actually chalk about uh, minus 140 season win total uh, 10 and a half DVOA you don't have to guess who was first of course it was the uh, Chiefs uh, meanwhile the defense 26 so uh, talk about kind of that unique a dichotomy and and more importantly just what this team was able to do offensively things that really we haven't seen in modern day football and more importantly uh, what's in store for the uh, encore here now that uh, teams uh, I guess in theory have had time to adjust well I think we what we saw last year was what happens when you put a mastermind uh, head coach who, who loves offense loves being creative and pair him with a quarterback who has a terrific arm, a lot of energy, and is fairly accurate uh, in, in, in the home. So, you know, it's it's a great combination, and I think it possibly could be just as good. I mean, you give Andy Reid an entire offseason using his creativity and offense to concoct, you know, different ways, different looks. I think he kept it fairly simple last year for Mahomes, just knowing that it was his first year um, and that there would be some struggles probably, you know, him being a first-year starter. And they, they did simplify things. So this year, I think they can add some wrinkles. Um, they could, you know, he's a smart guy. Um, Mahomes is, and he can he can adapt and do some different things in the field. So I think you'll see um, some new tricks up his sleeve. And the offense, I mean, it's hard to produce, let's be honest, the same numbers they did last year. Um, you'd have to say under if you're looking at, you know, production-wise this year compared to what they did last year. It's probably going to be a little bit less overall. But I don't think it's going to be as easy as you – know, I hear a lot of people saying out there, oh, you know, Mahomes, you know, second year's a starter – Got to take a couple steps back. The league will be on to him and, and this and that. I mean, I, don't you think Andy Reid, you know, kind of anticipates that? I mean, he's definitely one of the sharper minds. So I think him and, and Biennemi, the offensive coordinator, will figure that out. Um, but they do have some issues in the backfield a little bit. I mean, th- they lost Kareem Hunt last year, obviously, with the, with the suspension. And um, they, they didn't really – they had backfield him kind of with Carlos High, which isn't really uh, – he's not much of a back anymore. He's kind of past his, his prime and more of a backup role. Uh, Damian Williams will probably start. He'll shoulder most of the load. I'm um, not too crazy about that backfield. They do have the the weapons on on as far as receivers though. Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins. They went out and drafted in the second round um, Hardman from Georgia, who's got great speed. Um, 
he's still very raw. So he's got to develop the catching skills. We throw him back there to stretch the field as well. You got Kelsey down the middle. I mean, it, you know, the offensive line um, was adequate last year. I wouldn't say it was great. Uh, They're a little bit thin at spots, but it's a, it's a good line overall. Uh, the only the only big loss they had was Mitch Morse, um, the center, which you know centers are important. So that could be it could be a difficult loss early on in the season as they adapt. But still a great Chiefs offense. I'm sure they'll be in the top five. Um, I'd be surprised if they're not you know right up there there with the, as they were last year. But they will take a step back as far as defense. They overhauled the entire defense. Uh, it's completely different. They decided to blow it up. Uh, they made some trades. They trade away D Ford. Um, to San Francisco for a second round pick. They dumped some salaries. Uh, they went out and got Justin Houston, the free agent. Um, uh, sorry, they let go of Justin Houston, the free agent. And he's a free agent now. And Eric Berry let go as well. Um, then they brought in uh, Steve Spagnuolo, who's the, the defensive coordinator. He worked under Andy Reid, I think, back in Philly for for a few years. Um, they're going to use a aggressive 4-3 scheme. Um, they, they were able to generate a lot of pass rush last year, but just didn't do well in coverage. So um, they're showing up the, the, the back end of the defense a little bit. They invested some draft picks um, early on on the defensive side of the, of the ball. I think the first four picks of the draft uh, were all on defense. So... Um, We'll see how it shakes out. I mean, they got Tyron Matthew, the to the safety to kind of you know be the leader back there in the secondary. Um, not a huge fan of his, but you know, there's definitely some people that think he's he's only going to get better. Um, the linebackers are still a bit of a question mark, um, but we'll see. I mean, it, to be honest, it really can't be much worse from the defensive side of the ball than it was last year. They get a ton of huge plays, got themselves in a ton of shootouts. So I think shaking it up and, and you know getting a new coordinator in, making some trades, you know, adding some new guys via free agency, um, just seeing if these guys click better. I mean, uh, the worst that can happen is it's the same as last year, uh, but the, the chances are it'll be a little bit better. So we'll see how it pans out. Another thing, too, to mention on the Chiefs, uh, the number two special teams unit uh, in the NFL last year. They're terrific on special teams. Uh, their coach uh, is one of the best in the league, the best in the NFL. They got great kick return and punt return options as well. So this Chiefs team will be good again. Um, like I said, it's hard to repeat the numbers from last year. But I'd be surprised if they drop off, drop off very much here, Andrew. Waz, what do you make of the week one move as Kansas City's at Jacksonville? That one opened five. Now down to three and a half. That's not a, a, a massive move. There are no threes out there. I don't think there will be. Is that a anti-Kansas City? Or more importantly, is that just kind of – um, like a profile type uh, bet, you know, team coming off a a, a big uh, season. You know, Jacksonville hasn't exactly looked the part, albeit in only uh, two uh, preseason games. But uh, like I said, what do you make here of the uh, early uh, anti Chiefs move? I think it's more to do with Jacksonville than it does to Kansas City. Um, just because I think Jacksonville, a lot of team, a lot of people are seeing that they're going to improve a lot just with you know finally getting a quarterback, Nick Foles, new coordinator. They're not going to be as inefficient on offense. Their defense. It's still really good. They kind of have a down year last year, but they were great the year before. So I think people are expecting them to bounce back a little bit. That's part of the move. And then the Chiefs, I think you're going to see when the Chiefs are on the road. I mean, they got even last year when they were really good. You saw money coming against the Chiefs on the road quite a bit uh, last year. So it just tends to happen that way. Um, the number probably was a little bit big. I actually did take a little bit of Jacksonville plus four and a half um, a few weeks ago. Uh, there's still fours out there. I still think that's a solid bet. Uh, week one with so many unknowns, it's hard to ask a team right off the bat to go on the road and win a game by essentially, you know, five, six, seven points. That's uh, with, with so much going on week one and the nerves and just teams not being quite ready with, with not a, you know, not playing starters much in preseason. That's just a tough line to cover on the road. So uh, I'm not surprised here that it's come down a little bit. L.A. Uh, Chargers also 12-4 and four last year, 9-7 and seven against the uh, spread, and they were one of the most uh, balanced teams in the NFL. Third offensively, DVOA, eighth defensively. They're plus 170 to uh, win the uh, division. Season over under win total, a click behind Kansas City, sitting there right at 10. And I did read uh, news uh, prior to uh, coming on here that uh, you got Derwin uh, James. That's a big injury. Don't know how long he's going to be out. Looks like he's going to have foot surgery, but a big loss there. Uh, he was a, a key component there of the success the Chargers had as a uh, defense. So uh, overall thoughts and opinion here on uh, L.A. Waz. Yeah, the Derwin James is super concerning. Uh, I remember last year they had the injury to, to Bosa. He was out, I think, nine games. Uh, the first nine games of the season, and, and people made kind of a big deal about that. I actually think Derwin James is even more important because they have 
they have good pass rushers up front. I mean, you got Melvin Ingram to go along with Bosa. So there's some other guys on the D line that are that are really good. Uh, so they have the depth there, but in the secondary, they're just a little more vulnerable. I mean, they got two they got two Pro Bowl cornerbacks. When you get back to the safety, the back line, um, you got Derwin James and and you know and not not a whole lot else. So we'll see. You know, we'll see how that plays out. I think um, you know they played a lot of nickel and dime packages last year. Uh, the Chargers, especially late in the season, when they kind of figured out that the more cornerbacks and safeties they can get in the field, the better. So they're not going to be able to probably play as many of those, uh, that type of scheme as well as they did last year. So that's definitely a big loss. Um, looking over offensively, um, yeah, Phillip Rivers, I mean, he's 37 years old. He had a huge year last year, still putting up the numbers. I don't see him slowing down much at all. Now, more, Melvin Gordon's holding out uh, for more money, so he probably misses week one unless they figure this out in the next – Two weeks. Uh, I don't think that's a huge, huge loss. Um, Eckler, the backup, was great last year. He averaged 5.2 yards per carry. Um, he might be better than Gordon or just as good. He could also catch the ball a little bit. So I, it is a depth loss for sure, and they'd rather have him in camp. But uh, that one might go on for a while from, from what I've been reading. Um, and then the receiving crew is, is not too bad either. you got Keenan Allen, one of the best in the game. Mike Williams um, is, is getting better and better and could be a pro bowler this year. Um, and getting Hunter Henry back, I mean, he missed basically the entire last season. Uh, he has potential to be a top five tight end uh, in, the, in the NFL. So if they get him back, um, you know, Rivers loves throwing to the tight end. He couldn't do that very much last year. Um, he's got a nice offensive line in front of him with four starters back, uh, a couple of pro bowlers up there, Mike Pouncey, Russell Okung. Uh, just a great line overall. So the offense should be clicking just fine, probably a little bit better than last year. Uh, the defense, we'll see. I, you know, I, it, you know, Derwin James is big. We'll see if they can backfill uh, without him. But it's still a very talented team overall. And I see a lot of people predicting the Chargers to win the division this year uh, in the in the AFC West. I don't think that's a bad pick. I think they're right up there with KC. Uh, should be a good battle all year, Andrew. Let's get to the clown show here, uh, Waz. The Oakland uh, Raiders, 4-12 and 12 last season, 6-10 and 10 against the uh, spread, 25th offensively DVOA, and not much better. In fact, worse, 30th uh, defensively is disaster, 20-1 to 1 to win the uh, division season win total. I've seen kind of a split line, 5 and a half, so we'll call 6 uh, the uh, prevailing number, of course. Plenty of news, plenty of media coverage there on uh, Antonio Brown, and you, know, you can talk all you want about it. Uh, he's an impact player. Uh, doesn't know, you know, we don't know if he's going to be uh, playing. I would assume he will, but you know, again, you can't assume anything here with the uh, Oakland Raiders. Uh, you got Gruden, uh, just a lot of non football related stuff with uh, Oakland. Uh, let's kind of go against the grain here, Waz. Let's talk about what kind of product we can expect on the uh, field and, more importantly, whether or not this team's going to improve. They have to almost by default because, you know, when I think of last season, I mean, there, there, was, there was a lot of quit. A lot of quit on that uh, that team, and you know you would think with a fresh start, uh, perhaps some upside. I don't know. They're going to be up against it. I mentioned earlier with that uh, strength schedule, two top level teams in the uh, division. So, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't know where to start with this team. I mean, there's there's holes everywhere. Just just a lot of issues. Uh, I guess we'll start with Antonio Brown. I mean, they brought him in basically to change the entire dynamic of the team, right? To have a go to guy that can stretch the field, open up the field for the other guys open up the running game maybe a little bit more. They drafted Josh Jacobs in the first round from Alabama, which is probably a little bit of a stretch based on where he should have went in the draft, but they wanted a big time back. I think he could be that. We don't know for sure. It's always hard to kind of gauge those Alabama guys. There's been some guys who have been really good out of college coming into the pros. and Other guys have been absolute flops. So we'll see uh, if he's the real deal or not. Derek Carr, I'm not a huge fan of his. He put up decent numbers last year. Uh, he got a lot of criticism throughout the year uh, from Gruden and from the coaching staff. He put up 4,000 yards, uh, completed 69% of his passes. I mean, he was very accurate, uh, strong quarterback. He did struggle a lot, though, when he had pressure in his face. Um, he, was, he ranked towards the bottom of the NFL when he had pressure. And this offensive line... It's not very good. Uh, they got one of the the worst uh, offensive line coaches in the league, and Tom Cable. I don't know why he still has a job, um, but you know every time he's been involved in a team, the offensive line usually goes downhill, and that was the case last year. Um, so I, I don't expect much there. And if they're not getting uh, much going on up front, it's hard to say what the running game is going to look like, what the passing game is going to look like. It's probably not going to be very pretty. Uh, but they're, you know, they they invested some money. They made some moves. They went out and got Trent Brown, the, the left tackle from the Patriots. 
Um, yeah, he was he was expensive. He's one of the highest priced guys in the off season. Um, but you know, and, and whenever you get a guy from the the Patriots, you got to kind of wonder: is the guy hit his peak, or if he's not worth the value? If they let him go, he usually goes the other way. So we'll see. Um, but you know, the offense. I think has potential to be really good. They got some big, you know, playmakers. If Brown's in there and, and Jacobs, you know, ends up being a decent back, and then you throw in Carr's big arm. I mean, they have the potential to be decent. Um, I think the defense is probably more problematic than the offense, to be honest with you. Um, they really are counting on some young guys to come through. Um, they got some guys like like you know Vontez Perfect, who they you know who's basically signed with a prove it contract that you know they brought him on cheap and he's well past his prime. Um, you know, Brandon Marshall, the same thing. They he brought him over from the Broncos. He's past his prime as well, and they want to see if he could give him a couple years of production. So I, I see a lot of soft spots in, in, at the linebacker position. Um, the cornerback, the secondaries are you know is not great. They got this kid Abram in the, in the first round, the safety who could be a day one starter. I, I haven't read very many good things about him so far in, in camp. Uh, so we'll see. It's just a lot of moving parts, a lot of new guys. They actually have. Uh, a lot of turnover on both sides of the ball, the Raiders do. And whenever you get a bunch of turnover like that, um, usually it leads to some poor results early on. And you shouldn't really expect this. This is year two of the regime, you know, for these guys. Now, Gruden came in last year, brought in his staff. Um, they got the same coaching staff, basically. And usually when you get to year two of your system, you kind of want things to calm down a little bit. You know, that first year you shake it up, you get your guys in there personnel wise. Um, but they're still. You know, making tons of moves and getting rid of guys and it just seems like year one all over again and I, I don't think they're going to be much better than they were last year uh last year they were four and 12 is an absolute disaster uh they hired that the espn analyst mike mayock as a gm and he's you know supposedly gonna you know bring this team to another level i don't know if i see it the draft was kind of weak uh based on most of the grades i saw um they did play last year i believe the third toughest schedule um no, sorry, that's this year. They're playing the third time of schedule this year. So they got very unfortunate because they had a bad year. And, uh, you know, somehow the way things worked out with their schedule, they end up with a third type of schedule just because of uh, the way that things lined up with the teams uh, that they got matched up against. Because I think they end up with the last place schedule. So you should, in theory, you have a, you know, an easy schedule, but not for them. So they actually have a brutal stretch. I think in the middle of the season, they have seven games away from home in a row. Uh, that includes uh, a game in London. And then they have uh, road games on both ends. So they don't have a home game over a seven-week stretch. They have a bye in there, a London game, and then a bunch of other road games. So I don't know if I've ever seen that before, but a team had seven uh, weeks without going home. So I'd imagine there would be some good spots during that stretch to fade the Raiders. So something to keep an eye on uh, as we look ahead. Yeah, I'm looking at the schedule right now. You know, week one, they play Denver. Denver's already taking money. That went open three. Oakland now, you know, one and a half. I mean, really, Boz – uh, until probably November, that's without question their best opportunity for a victory because they have Kansas City the following week at home. Then they go back to back at Minnesota at Indy, be catching a touchdown or thereabouts in those two games. And that Bears game, I th- think there's a star. So is that a London game? I would assume. I don't know. Yes, okay. London. And then they get the bye week, and then it's another back to back road games at Green Bay and at Houston. I mean, those aren't two elite teams, but you're still again, you're a very poor team. Uh, you're having to go on the road. You're potentially uh, weary. So, I, you know, best case scenario. I mean, can you envision somehow, some way? I mean, I, yeah, of course, you got a chance. You're an NFL team, but you know, them going three and four, I highly doubt. You know, doubt it here, Waz. Even of that stretch, if they somehow win two games, to me, that's that's a monster accomplishment. Yeah, it's a tough stretch. I mean, they, you know. With all the chemistry issues they have internally, you know, to go through a stretch like that, I mean, it's not going to be pretty. I'm sure we'll have Antonio Brown. If things aren't going well, he's going to become even a bigger problem than he is now. I mean, you know, he, he's fine when your team's winning and you're winning divisions every year like you did in Pittsburgh and you deal with them. But when you're losing, those kind of problems get amplified. So I'm sure it'll get ugly off the field a little bit as well. Um, you know, I, I played a pretty big bet on this one under the season win total. It was at six. Uh, and I got fear. I got. I think I got it at six minus twenty. If I want, I want to say something like that. Minus twenty five. Uh, so I, you know, I, I can't see him winning seven games. I think now it's maybe five and a half at some shops. But you can still find sixes out there, I believe. So I think it's a good bet. I mean, to, to get a team like this to improve, basically to improve three games when they basically shook up the entire roster again, kind of doing a do over here. I just don't see how they're going to get that much better. 
Uh, they'll need things to really kind of take shape really fast. And as you saw here, if you watch watching Hard Knocks at all, you can see that things aren't really taking shape that quickly here. It's, it's you know, you can't even get Antonio Brown in camp. Uh, you got Gruden with his shenanigans. And, you know, it's just – it's one of those things where – you know, you got a guy. The guys running the uh, the, the asylum here aren't, aren't guys you can count on. So I think it's going to be another long year in Oakland. Yeah, and last thing, of course, that strength of schedule we talked about last year. Number two, according to uh, Sagarin, uh, top level schedule. And then again, depending on how you grade out uh, this year, just from opponent season over under wins. Uh, you know, tied there for a second behind uh, Houston and uh, tied with uh, Denver. So uh, I agree with you. They are going to be up against it, particularly early on. You know, uh, Waz, it's funny, just the way it's scheduled, you know, you, you hit on it, the way things kind of can play out with a dysfunctional bunch. You know, had the schedule been flip flop, maybe where they had you know a couple chances for victory, and then had that schedule late in the season, you know, you you know you develop a little bit of a continuity, some confidence, whatever. But it's going to be really intriguing to see you know where this team is at mentally, chemistry wise, uh, if they do start. And I'm being generous, two and five, you know, one and six, or even potentially zero oh and seven, particularly if they don't get that win in week one uh, against uh, Denver. So, uh, was great stuff as uh, always. Why don't you tell our listeners are really quick uh it's knocking at the uh, door what's going on how are we prepping for the uh, football season at better iq yeah i'm ready to go in the nfl i'm actually well ahead of where i usually am at this point i got a lot more work done in july um than i typically do i'm usually kind of going all the way up to the beginning of the season with my my homework and my study and i'm still obviously doing a little bit of that just but now it's more fine tuning where i'm just looking for injuries or issues in camp um gotten through all 32 teams a few weeks ago so yeah i feel good i'm in a little bit of preseason here and getting in action there and getting some good uh, information uh you know every now and often from that so I, I feel good i probably to be honest and you know i'm not blowing smoke here I, i'm probably the best most prepared I've been for the NFL season uh, ever. Um, I just really tried to get a lot of that work done early on because we have a lot of things going on behind the scenes at Better IQ that I kind of want to prioritize this and get it done first and then uh, focus on some of the projects we have in the, in the back background. So, uh, yeah, I'm ready to go. I wish uh, I wish you were here tomorrow because uh, i got a lot of good week one bets here and things are shaping up for me really well. Can't go wrong with any of the uh, Better IQ handicappers for the NFL uh, season, including uh, Waz, 59%, 15 units of uh, profit. Full season coverage for the NFL, run you $9.99, includes every single selection at a prescribed time, ensuring that you get the best of the number, includes the playoffs, includes the Super Bowl, uh, that available on the Buy Picks page, or uh, select the handicapper, scroll down, uh, you'll see all the options. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, support at betteriq.com. Okay, that'll wrap up the uh, show. Thanks for listening, and we'll have uh, more football talk lined up here for tomorrow. 